What is going on, everybody? What is going on? The Catch Fam. My name is John Dawson, and in today's video, we are breaking down five must start players heading into week three of the 2023 fantasy football season. If you guys are new to the channel, this is all we do here all year round free fantasy football content, redraft, dynasty, and best ball. So if you guys are into that, be sure to subscribe on the way in. But guys, more importantly, please get in the comment section down below anything that you guys need. Start, sits, trades, roster reviews, whatever it may be. Any questions pertaining to the 2023 fantasy football season, drop them down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. But let's not waste any more time. Let's hop into today's video. All right, first overall, I'm going with Amari Cooper against the Tennessee Titans, who come in as the third worst team in the entire league against opposing wide receivers. We know this secondary, almost on a yearly basis at this point, is not good against opposing wide receivers. Their strong suit is stopping the run, and then they almost do absolutely nothing against the wide receiver position. They just got torched by Keenan Allen and Mike Williams last week. This is a home game for the Browns. I expect this Tennessee Titans unit to stop the run game of the Cleveland Browns, especially with the awful injury to Nick Chubb. Not that I don't think maybe Jerome Ford as well as Kareem Hunt could be productive this year. It's just not going to happen against the Tennessee Titans run defense. It is simply not. So I do believe that the Browns are going to have to rely on the pass. And I think Cooper is a strong start. And don't get me wrong, for a lot of you guys, Amari Cooper is a player you're starting no matter what based on your roster. But we see a lot of rosters here on the channel. And I even have one or two rosters where I own Amari Cooper, and I'm still in a position to start other players over him. So have confidence in Cooper. And I know, I mean, last week, a lot of you guys sat him, right? We didn't get news that he was going to play until Monday afternoon, essentially. So some of you guys might be used to having Amari Cooper on the bench, but make sure he's in your starting lineups heading into this matchup. He had 16 fantasy points against Pittsburgh last week, 10 targets, seven receptions, 90 receiving yards. He's at at least 12.3 yards per catch in both games so far this year. He is a good start, a must start moving into week three. All right, let's talk about another veteran wide receiver that most of you guys are probably starting anyways, but could be one of those guys who's maybe in your flex due to where you drafted him, who's looking like one of the best overall values in fantasy football, at least through the first two weeks of the season. That's Mike Evans, who's the wide receiver three in full PPR so far this year. 18.6 fantasy points in week one, 29.1 in week two against the Chicago Bears. Had 171 receiving yards off of six receptions and a touchdown, 28 and a half yards per catch for Evans in week two. Baker Mayfield looks like he has eyes for Evans no matter who they're playing. I think some of you guys out there might look at this matchup against the Eagles and potentially feel a little bit queasy. Like, is Baker going to be able to get through this game? That front seven for the Eagles is very good. Well, guess what? The secondary for the Eagles is not good whatsoever. They come in as the fourth worst team in the entire league against opposing wide receivers in fantasy football. That secondary is essentially getting torched on a weekly basis. I mean, the Patriots looked great against them in week one, and then the Vikings in week two on Thursday night football threw it all over the place. Listen, I get it. You might not have the most confidence that Baker Mayfield can come out and sling it against the Eagles, but he's looked pretty dang good so far this season, and Mac Jones was successful against him in week one. So I think that Baker is actually going to be just fine in this game, and at the worst, he's going to provide Mike Evans with a good floor going into the week. So if you're looking at your lineup and you see Mike Evans going up against the Eagles, you're worried about this game script. I would not be this Eagles unit is not just giving up a ton of points to the wide receiver position. They are also giving up a ton of points to the quarterback and tight end position. They've really just been good against a run so far this year. So I see another good game for Mike Evans. Is he going to have 29 fantasy points? Probably not, but I still see a strong double-digit performance. I consider Mike Evans continued as a must-start, moving into week three. All right, next, let's talk about Kenneth Walker coming off of a two-touchdown performance, 18.4 fantasy points after having 10 fantasy points in week one. Listen, I think Walker is a safe weekly 
player. I really liked Walker coming into the season where you could draft him. And so far, I think he's proving to be the running back that I thought he'd be. I think, you know, 10 to 20 fantasy points on a weekly basis, a consistent double digit guy. And this week he gets the Carolina Panthers, who are the second worst team in the entire league against the running back position in fantasy football. I mean, Tony Jones just had a day against them last week when Jamal Williams went down. So I like Walker quite a bit. This Panthers unit has been pretty dang good against the wide receiver position so far this year, although they're going into this matchup a little bit banged up. But I do believe that the Seahawks will rely on the run game first. No, that's what Pete Carroll prefers to do. And nonetheless, even with all the wide receiver power they have, this is a great matchup for Kenneth Walker, I see an easy touchdown in this game. I see an easy double-digit performance. I'd be very, very surprised if he does not get you 10 to 18 fantasy points, what he's done through the first two weeks of the season so far in this week three matchup. Simply put, he's coming off of a good game. This is a great matchup. Kenneth Walker is a must-start moving into week three. All right. So we've talked about a lot of guys who you probably already have enough confidence in. I'm just trying to boost that confidence further and make sure they're in your starting lineups. But now let's talk about a guy who I don't think a lot of you guys feel so confident in, in week three, and that's Brees Hall going up against the New England Patriots. And I get it. You look at this offense, you think Zach Wilson, you think overall, well, uh, this New England Patriots defense, pretty dang good. Well, they looked a little soft to start this 2023 season, and right now they are the 10th worst team against the running back position. Brees Hall did absolutely nothing in that away game against Dallas in Week 2, only touched the football four times after he had 10 rushing attempts, two targets in Week 1. So I think that this Jets coaching staff will listen to Brees Hall's wishes of wanting to get the football more in this game and i think that this is actually a sneaky good matchup and listen while the new england patriots haven't necessarily been great against a wide receiver position coming in at 18th overall they haven't been bad but i still think that the strong suit of this jets team is obviously running the football and playing defense at the moment i think the coaching staff will realize that they have a better chance if they are feeding the running back position and i still think Brees hall has the advantage over Dalvin Cook, the way he has looked to start the season. So this is a risky start. Might be more of a flex option or a desperate RB2 option. But with all the injuries that we've seen through the first two weeks of the season, Brees Hall could be a realistic RB2 for a lot of your guys' lineups. And I do think that you guys can have a little bit of confidence in rolling him out there. I mean, the Patriots defense just got torched by Raheem Mostart. They did not look good against a run in week one. Granted, it was the Eagles. This is a home game for the Jets. I think that Brees Hall is a solid start going into the week. A little bit of risk here, but we always want to throw at least one player on the list throughout the week who has a little bit of risk, but a good amount of upside. And I'm going to go with Brees Hall as we approach week three. All right, last but not least, let's talk about a quarterback. Let's talk about Captain. You like that, Kirk Cousins. Coming off of a 28 and a half fantasy point performance in week two against the Philadelphia Eagles with 364 passing yards and four passing touchdowns. Through the first two weeks of the season, he's thrown at least 344 passing yards and two touchdowns in each game last week was a lot better in terms of the turnovers he had two fumbles and a pick in week one in week two just one fumble so positive there but nonetheless when you guys have you guys know what Kirk Cousins is doing right now he is throwing the football at a ridiculous rate 44 attempts in each of the first two games this Chargers secondary is not good whatsoever they're not good against the run and they are certainly not good against the quarterback position giving up the second most fantasy points to the position through the first two weeks of the season. And let's face it, this Vikings defensive unit is not good at all as well. This is going to be a shootout. This is going to be a back and forth game. There's going to be plenty of points scored. Kirk Cousins is primed for another elevated ceiling going in to this matchup. Listen, if you're struggling with your starting quarterback, you don't feel good about their matchup. Maybe you have Justin Fields. Maybe you're worried about Joe Burrow. Maybe a Daniel Jones. You didn't want to start him. Maybe an Anthony Richardson. He's out. Maybe you're not confident in Deshaun Watson after last week. 
A lot of you guys out there have been able to pick up Kirk Cousins off of the waiver wire. You should have enough confidence to start him over a quarterback that you drafted. And if you drafted Kirk Cousins, you should have confidence enough due to this matchup to start him this week. I think he absolutely lights it up. I think he gets close to what we saw him do in week two. I think he is primed for another very solid fantasy performance. He's a must-start quarterback moving into week three. And that'll do it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the content today, be sure to hit that like button on the way out. If you guys are new to the channel, hope you guys enjoyed the content. Be sure to subscribe on the way out. This is all we do all year round, free fantasy football content. So if you're into that, be sure to subscribe. But most importantly, please get in the comment section down below, guys. Any fantasy football questions that you guys have, start sits, trades, roster reviews, whatever it is, let me know. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. With that, I will say. Thank you guys so much for watching and or listening. And remember, you saw it here on The Catch.